Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently, Adobe updated both Lightroom Classic and the version of Lightroom that they simply call Lightroom, but what many of us refer to as Lightroom CC. In today's video, I'm going to go over everything that's new and exciting in this, the latest version of Lightroom. Now, I'm specifically talking about Lightroom Classic version 14.4 and Lightroom version 8.4. For today's demonstration, I'm going to show you everything using Lightroom Classic, but everything I'll be showing you in this video also is in Lightroom, or if you prefer to call it Lightroom CC. Also, I do want to mention that there's support for new cameras. I'll have that listed in the description of this video. And also, there is a new feature that's only in Lightroom Classic. You can now tether with Fujifilm. So if you own a Fujifilm camera, you now could tether in Lightroom Classic. I'm not going to demo that. I do also want to mention that everything I'll be demoing in this video, I've actually done videos and demos of in the past because all of these new features in Lightroom Classic and Lightroom have been in Camera Raw for a few months. And when they showed up in Camera Raw, I did videos of them there. And I did mention that I expected these new features to show up in Lightroom sooner or later. Well, that day has come. I also do want to apologize for my voice. I'm fighting off a cold. Um, hopefully it goes away soon. Now, the first new feature I want to talk about has to do with reflections. You can see I have this photo I took at the Smithsonian of the set of All in the Family. And you can see Archie's chair and Edith's chair and so on. But you see all these reflections in the glass. I like to remove those. To do that, go to the Remove Tools. And there you'll see there's this new tab, Distraction Removal. We'll roll that open and right at the top is reflections. Roll that open and then click apply. Now we'll take a second or two to apply. Well, it did it very quickly and you can see that it removed the reflections. But by default, it's going to be in preview mode. You can see quality preview. That just does it very quickly. If you'd like to try to remove more of the reflection, what you could do is go to this drop down and you could try standard or best. Of course, best is going to take the longest and previews going to take the least long. Let's go with best. And then just have to wait. It's saying its estimated time is 50 seconds. So that's pretty long. So what I'll do is I'll pause the recording and we'll come back when it's done. Okay, we're back and as you can see, it probably really didn't do much better. There's still a bit of a reflection up here in the top right hand side. What you'll have, though, after it removes the reflection, you'll have the option to bring some of the reflection back with this slider. You can move it to left, and you can see I'll start to reintroduce the reflection. As a matter of fact, if I go all the way to the left, you'll notice I'll take the entire photo away, and all I'll have is reflection. I'm not sure why you might want to do that. Maybe there's an arty reason you want to do that, but you have the slider here and you can bring back some of the reflection. Let's try another one. What I found it works great on is with zoo animals. Often when you're shooting through like thick plexiglass, you'll get a reflection. You could see here, this is Ollie, the orangutan. And you could see that there's this reflection going across the image. Now, I'm going to change this to standard just to try it out. And we'll click on apply. And you could see that it's saying it's going to take 15 seconds. And we'll let it do its thing. And we'll see how it does. And as you probably know, if you've ever tried to remove reflections using more conventional methods, it's almost impossible to remove reflections. So this is a welcome addition to Lightroom because now this is a salvageable image. There is a bit of reflection still in the upper background area, but that I'm really not worried about. Um, I could put a mask back there and darken the background, uh, but you can see then I could bring some of the reflection back with this slider and you can see the reflection I was talking about. So that salvaged this image and I really do like this shot. Here's another one. We'll do one more. You can see this reflection over here on the left hand side. This is a Japanese macaque. Uh, same thing. Let's this time we'll go to preview and we'll click apply and see how it does. It doesn't always work perfectly as you notice from that first image of the uh, set from All in the Family. It didn't do such a great job. And here it's not doing as good of a job either. Uh, just for the sake of completeness for this video, I'll do best also. And it's saying 55 seconds. And I will again uh, pause the recording and we'll come back when it's done. Okay, it just finished and it really didn't change much. It might have made it a little better around the um, 
Japanese uh, macaques, Japanese snow monkey, I think they're called, actually. It's a macaque, though. It made it look a little better around his ear, but other than that, it's still got the reflection over here on the left-hand side, but it's still a little better. Now, you might notice that there's another thing here in the remove tool that's new. It's people. Well, what's that all about? Well, you could remove people from an image. Again, I was at the Smithsonian. I have this image of this old carriage, and we have two people that are in the frame, and I'd like to remove those people as well. So we'll roll open people, and it's going to detect the distractions as soon as you roll it open, and you can see that it puts a red overlay over what it thinks the distractions are. In this case, it's this woman and her shadow, and this, I think that's a man and his shadow. And then all you need to do then is click remove. You also have the option of clicking here where it has the overlay, and you can change the color and the opacity of the overlay. I like to use the default red with a 50% opacity. That works fine. So we'll click remove. And then what you'll notice is it will give you, um, you know, it'll remove the people. And here it, it looks okay. It did kind of do something with the end of this carriage that isn't actually probably accurate. You can see like this kind of bar juts out over here and it's kind of missing over there. Well, what you could do is click on the little eraser that it puts there. You see it put an eraser for this man. Then it has the eraser for the woman. Click on the eraser. Once you do that, you'll have variations, and you have three variations. So I could click and see another variation. You can see it changed the background as well, and click again. There's another variation, and actually that one probably is more accurate. It's probably not actual, but it's more accurate. You could see there. Now, if I don't like this one, what it did back there, click here get that active by clicking on that little eraser and then go through those three variations. I like the second one, I think the best. So you can see how we got rid of those people. So there's before and there's after. Before and after. Now, let's try another one. This is uh, just a demo here. I use this video or I use this image. I should, oops, I had it open. So it found them right away. But I just wanted to mention, I used this image when I demoed this, um, showing it in camera raw. And someone commented that, why would you want to remove people from this image? It's just a demo. It's just a demo. All right. I'm just using it to show how to use the tool. I'm not saying that if you have an image that has two joggers going through it, that you definitely need to remove them all right all right with that said you'll notice that it found the two joggers but it also thinks these lights in the background here are people those are not people so what you could do is click on that one to make it active and then you could click the little trash can here to remove that selection so when i do click on remove it will not remove those lights i don't want it to remove these lights either so click on that little eraser to make that active. Then click this little trash can to get rid of the selection there. Then click remove. And then it will remove the joggers and their shadows. And it will give us the variations, as I mentioned. You have to just click on this little um, eraser first to get the variations to show up. So then you can uh, go through the variations by clicking the arrows and I think they're very close. That one I don't like, the first one. It kind of has a stick or something in there. I don't know. just don't like it. That one maybe looks the best. So that's how you use that tool. Let's try another one. This one, um, I remember when this was first introduced in Camera Raw, um, it didn't work at all on this image. Uh, but now you could see that because I had the tool open, it automatically found all the people, even the people that were down here. And if I wanted those people to stay, again, I could click on the little eraser and click then the little trash can to remove it. But I wanted to remove everyone. So we're going to click remove and let it do its thing. And you'll notice it's got several different erasers. So it's going to have several different removal parts. And you can see that here it added these kind of like, I don't know what those are, what you would call those walls. But I could click on that eraser and I have the variations and I could go through each variation. That one's pretty similar. And I can't get the root rid of the walls. But if I'd like to try to regenerate, click here and generate, and it will just regenerate this section. Not everything, just the part that's active. And you can see it gave me another variation of walls. 
it's still putting walls in there. But you could see it did remove all the people, whereas in the past, it really didn't work very well. It didn't find all the people to begin with. So they have definitely improved the tool. Well, let's just do another one for the sake of fun. We have some people all over the place, and you can see because I have the tool open, it's automatically finding all the people and shadows, and this was early in the morning, so the shadows are long. And we'll just click Remove and let it do its thing. And you can see, I think this one worked pretty well. Even though, you know, it's got kind of a busy area. And you can see that it looks pretty good. But if you don't like something, again, you can click on the... You have to click on the eraser to get the variations. So you can come in here and try a different variation. I think that one looks better. And finally, one more Niagara Falls. We have all these people down here. I have the tool open, so it's going to find them. You found all the people on the other side. Now, maybe I want those people there. You know, if I did, click on the little eraser, click the trash can. Click that eraser, eraser, click the trash can. That one, trash can. And that last eraser, trash can. Now click remove, and it will just remove these people here. And it's doing it in, looks like, five different parts. You can see there were five erasers. So if you don't like something like we're missing railing here, um, just see if you can get a different variation. It looks better. But none of those look good. But again, I could click generate again. I'm not going to for the sake of time. But you can see what it does. Not too bad. Um, overall, I found it works pretty well. Now, the next new feature is probably my favorite new feature. You know, in the past, if you wanted to remove noise using the AI noise removal that's built into Lightroom, it creates a new file, a DNG file. Well, it doesn't do that anymore. So to get at this, a totally unedited raw file. As you can see, none of the little eyeballs are lit up, so nothing has been edited here. I always recommend that if you are going to reduce noise, do it as early in your workflow as possible. So we're going to go to detail, and now you'll notice that you have denoise, a slider, then you have raw detail, super resolution. In the past, denoise was here, and you would click the little button, and then it would create a separate file that has the noise reduced. And sometimes, especially if you it was just minor noise you were removing, you didn't know sometimes what file you were on, and you had to like keep looking at the, for the name of the file, whatever. It was always kind of a pain in the neck. Now, because it just stays on the same file, the same raw file, and by the way, it only works on raw files. Um, hopefully, they expand it so it works on other types of files as well. But with that, it just works on the same file, so you don't have that extra file to confuse things. Just click on Denoise to make it active. And like before, it will take a second to kick in. Unlike before, though, it it does its noise removal, and then you have the option of moving a slider. Before, it brought up a dialog box, and it would remove the noise in the little thumbnail in the dialog box, and then you would move the slider to dial it in properly. Well, now, you just click that to remove the noise. Then you have the slider, and you could more finely tune it with the slider after it removes the noise. And as you can see, it's done. Let's remove the noise. I could zoom in. I'm going to hold in the command camera, Mac, control can it. PC zoom into a part like right there. There's still a little noise in there, so I want to take this slider more to the right, move it more to the right, and you can see that it looks pretty clean now. You could click and drag around. I think that looks pretty good. So you can see it's a lot better. Um, but you'll notice when you use denoise, it automatically adds raw details, and then super resolution will be grayed out. So you can't uh, use super resolution. Now, if you did want to use super resolution, you just can't use it in conjunction with the noise. You'd have to go to something like this. Um, let me hit I a couple times. This is uh, 5610 by 3744. And if I click on super resolution, it's going to take a few seconds. You'll notice, too, it doesn't create another file. It just will increase the resolution of this file. Now it's 11,219 by 7,487, as you can see. But you'll see now I can't do denoise on it. So that's kind of the trade-off. If you need to use do super resolution, you can't do denoise. If you need to do denoise, you can't do super resolution. But you can see how it didn't create a new file. It's non-destructive. If I just turn it off, 
it will revert back to its original file size 5610 by 3744. And denoise is a non-destructive as well. If I want to go back to my noisy image, just uncheck the box and you'll see we have all our noise back. Bring our denoise back, just check the box again. So that's really cool. This is my favorite new feature. I love this, that it's not creating that extra file any longer. It's still non-destructive. The only thing I really want is hopefully someday it will work on non-raw files. Because as it is now, it will only work on raw files. And it doesn't even work on all raw files. It just works on certain type of, most raw files, but not all raw files. So someday, hopefully, they uh, make it so it works on every file imaginable. And then it would be pretty much perfect. By the way, when you get these little, um, like, um, little, like, check marks here, it's telling you that um, raw details automatically applied when using super resolution or denoise. So it's telling you what I just told you basically that it's uh, raw details has been already applied. Super resolution cannot be applied when you use denoise. So that's it. That's everything that's new in the latest version of both Lightroom Classic and Lightroom. That's Lightroom Classic version 14.4 and Lightroom version 8.4. And again, in the description below this video, I'll have a list of the support, uh, new camera support. And I also have some courses on Lightroom. And by the way, if you have purchased my courses on Lightroom. I have one on Lightroom Classic and another one on Lightroom or Lightroom CC. I will be updating those courses next week with these new features. So look for that next week. Uh, so I also have some other free stuff like you could get um, downloadable PDFs of keyboard shortcuts for both Lightroom Classic and Lightroom CC. So you can download those from my website for free, print them at home and all that. I'll have all that listed in the description below this video. And thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.